Check, check. And be careful with that thing, bro. Be careful with it. <laughs> 16, 16. Seven, it's going to be hot. It's coming out. It's coming out. Let me know. Let's take them to like 66 or 70. I won't tell it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Such a delay today. Yeah. All right, it's good to see all you guys and the uh, faces. And I know the, the one who put the smiles on your faces has is, got to be Jesus. So it's just not an all thing. Um, so will you guys look in Genesis 22 with me? I'm going to share. I've been, uh, for too long, I've been trying to commit myself to just starting in the beginning of the Old Testament and reading through it without skipping all over the place. So I've made it about to this point. Um, and I, I want to I wanna read Abraham's faith being tested. And uh, I'll start in the first verse in Genesis 22, and then we'll uh, open up in prayer. It says, sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Now take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkeys, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife, and the two of them walked on together. Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered. And they both walked on together. And when they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. 
And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. And at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in his uh, horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. And as I was reading this scripture, I was thinking about how you know, God, God put Abraham's love and commitment to the test um, by telling him to offer the thing that he, he loved most dearly. Um, and it says multiple times, um, offer your son, your only son. Um, and, and God knew, God knew that there would be a plan that he would do the same thing, that he would offer his son, his only son, as a sign and a commitment of his love for us. And uh, there was nothing greater than that. Um, there would have been no greater way to be able to show how much Abraham truly loved God than for God to ask him to offer the one thing that God was willing to give up himself in a future time. And as Jesus hung on the cross, I also noticed that, the, that he, he even had Isaac carry the wood on his back as a sign that this is what it would look like. Um, so this morning as we go into this time of fellowship and Abraham actually called this we're going to worship as he was about to sacrifice his only son to God and that blew my mind too maybe maybe we need to look more clearly at what worship really looks like and what are we willing to give up and, and sacrifice so that we can be close to God so let's open up in prayer and then we'll go into worship Jesus, I'm just grateful for you. I'm grateful for all the things and all the times that you're still here, even when I'm not. Uh, for your uh, unfailing love, Jesus, your faithfulness, and your patience, and your good. Uh, I'm just thankful to be reminded of your sacrifice this morning. <coughs> Pray that we are uh, giving you our all in worship, Jesus. I love you. I pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this time that we come together and we can worship you. We will hear the message that you have in store for us. We thank you for what you did on the cross, Lord. Thank you for uh, bringing our own soul's heart to, to read what he just read as, a, as it is a representation of, of you giving up your son for us. I just pray that uh, you would attend the responsive hearts and that we would have in this message change. I love you and I ask these things to do so. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to start off by singing Goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. 
All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I can make, oh, I would sing of the goodness of God. I love your you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life. You have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life played down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I've surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I give me I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing of the goodness of Oh, oh, oh. 
Jesus, um, I just come into your presence with my brothers and sisters here today. Jesus, I pray that as we, you know, we hear what you have to say for us, Jesus, that our hearts are open and our ears are open to hear what you have to say, Jesus, and for us to just, you know, take everything in and that we have change of heart, Jesus, and to be incomplete with you, Jesus, and to trust you and have hope and faith in you. I pray that your words be spoken today, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. Oh, what a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Because you have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. How are you guys? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to share the word of God with you, uh, what the the Lord has put on my heart. And, you know, it was, uh, I think it was yesterday, I was talking with one of the, the brothers, and before that, um, I was just talking with Jesus, and I'm like, man, uh, a new year. I'm like, well, what is, what is a new year? And the Lord reminded me, and I'm grateful for when he does this, right? He said, you realize that you're too stupid to be human. He goes, it's not, it's not a new year. Jesus isn't up there on the throne like, man, it's a new year. What am I, what am I gonna do? Nothing is, is, is truly new. All right, Jesus, Jesus reminds us that in Ecclesiastes 1 9, he says, history merely repeats itself. It had always been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. Sometimes people say, here is something new, but actually, it's old. Nothing is ever truly new. We don't remember what happened in the past and in future generations. No one will remember what we are doing now. But I love in Isaiah 43, because Jesus says he's doing something new. And he's making a new heaven and a new earth. 
And I'm just, I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of what he's doing. His, his redemptive work in reaching lost and broken people. And it's only through the blood of God's son that we're able to experience this. I was just, a couple weeks ago, I was, I was laying in the bed. And God was like, hey, I just want you to remind my church about the blood of my son. I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Teach me. What is it that you want, want, want to sink deep into my own heart first? <laughs> changing me, shaping and molding me before I deliver a message to the church. <clears throat> this, is, this is what Jesus says. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. <clears throat> do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself and they will someday honor me before the whole world. <clears throat> and so I'm going to talk today about the blood of Jesus and how precious it is. And do we value the blood of Jesus? <clears throat> so in, in Leviticus, so in the Old Covenant, they had uh, these different sacrifices that they would have to make. It was a blood sacrifice, whether it be goats, uh, um, whatever, the lambs, um, different animals would be used as different sacrifices uh, for sin offerings, right? But it says in Leviticus 17, uh, 10, and if any native Israelite or foreigner living among you eats or drinks blood in any form, I will turn against that person and cut him off from the community of your people. For the life of the body is in its blood. And I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. And that is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood, neither you nor the foreigners living among you. So this would be the old covenant. But when Jesus comes and brings the new covenant, he tells us that there's true food and true drink. And that true food is Jesus. That true drink is the blood of Jesus because there's life in the blood, right? All of us sitting here right now, there's physical life, right? With, with the physical blood. But the blood of Jesus, that's real life. Real life is found in the blood of Jesus and being clothed in the blood of Jesus. Because it says right here, I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. And so it was the blood of Jesus, right, that was given in exchange for all of your lives. All of us sitting here right now. <clears throat> it was through the blood of God's one and only son that purified us, that purification the pursuit of holiness as we've been being taught on. And that pursuit of holiness, the endurance, is through the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I love how in John 6, Jesus is talking about the bread of life, right? He's the bread of life. Um, so I'll give you guys a minute to... <clears throat> So this is after Jesus feeds the 5,000. And I'm just going to read verses 22 through, let's see, 59. <clears throat> the next day, the crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat, and they realized Jesus had not gone with them. Several, several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when... The crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, 
when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want to perform God's work too. What should we do? So you see the people's response here, right? Their first response is, hey, what should we do? What do we got to do, right? Then Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. And so here's their answer, though. And I think a lot of the times, this is sometimes our answer when Jesus tells us to do things, right? They say, they answer, show us. Show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? Yeah, oh, man. They were about to find out what they were, what he was going to do. Because <clears throat> in John 20, Jesus says, blessed are those who believe without seeing me. <clears throat> After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you true bread from heaven. And that's what Jesus is offering you today. And he's going to continuously offer you this until he returns. <clears throat> the true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But if, but you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me, however, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God, who has sent me not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up on the last day. <clears throat> and I'm going to hit on it, but you see Jesus repeats himself four times in, this, in, in these passages. <clears throat> For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up on the last day. So there's the second time he's talking about the last day. That he'll raise them up on the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. And how can he say I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. So there it is again. He's repeating himself. He's trying to get, get a point across to, to who, he's, who he's speaking with. <clears throat> As it is written in the scriptures, this will be, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. And so I, I love how Jesus says, they will all be taught by God and everyone who listens to the Father and learns. There's an action attached to that. Right? Are, are we putting into action what we're being taught by God. <clears throat> Not that anyone uh, has ever seen the Father. Only I who has sent from God have seen him. And I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us flesh to eat, they asked. And so you see the people's response through the whole time Jesus is talking to them. They're just, you know, arguing, complaining, grumbling over what Jesus is speaking to them. And how often do we do that? I mean, I, I know that there's times where I complain about things. I just, I do, right? There's often times where Jesus tells me to do something and 
I'm just like, man, Jesus, you want me to do that? Really? Right? There's there a murmur and I'm complaining. All right. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. And so it's a requirement. This is what Jesus is saying. You, you must do this. <clears throat> but anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person on the last day. There's the fourth time he says it. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I am in him. I live because of the living Father who sent me in the same way. Anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. And he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. So as Jesus was just teaching me that it's through his blood that we're able to, to experience spiritual life. I mean, we have physical blood, but as Jesus paid a ransom from our empty life that we inherited from our ancestors, that empty life was filled with physical blood, physical life. But we were empty inside because we weren't filled, right, with the Holy Spirit and clothed in the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> it's through the blood of Jesus that we have patient endurance to continue to have a pursuit of holiness. It's through the blood of Jesus that gives life, that gives us endurance to be able to make disciples that make disciples. It's through the blood of Jesus that there's forgiveness. It's through the blood of Jesus that there's salvation. It's through the blood of Jesus that we're able to experience the Holy Spirit. Everything is through the blood of Jesus. One man. The perfect sacrifice. Gave up his life, his blood on the cross for us. He, he's purchased all of us with his blood. God, God's like, man, I love you so much. I'm going to send my one and only son to die. Do, do we value the blood of Jesus? Like as a church, do we value the blood of Jesus? It's through the blood of Jesus that we're able to experience meaningful relationships. It's through the blood of Jesus that as he poured his spirit out, that we're able to experience perfect unity with one another in the body. Real life is found. In the blood of Jesus. In John 19, <clears throat> as Jesus is on the cross, it says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill the scriptures, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked the sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there. The next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath because it was the Passover, they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear. And immediately blood and water flowed out. And so as Jesus was teaching me about this scripture, it was really intimate because he taught me about the heart. And so as Jesus was pierced, right, and, and, and 
back back in this culture, when when they would do crucifixions, they wouldn't pierce, right? They would break the legs. But but when they pierced Jesus, right, blood and water flowed out, right? And so before the world even existed, God already knew how he was going to create us, right? He already knew everything. And so for the heart, the human heart, right? Jesus came as human, right? Full be God. But there's a sack around the heart. And it's filled with blood and water. And like, I, I just love how God orchestrated all of that. He already knew, right? He said, hey, not one bone will be broken, but he will be pierced for our rebellion. <clears throat> and when you think about it, um, I was talking with, with, with Lego about this yesterday. I know Le Lego loves uh, John 7, uh, rivers of living water flowing from the heart. Um, but you got to think as these people were watching the crucifixion, right? These Jewish leaders, these people, right? I would, I would believe that they remembered when Jesus said, right? It says in, in John 7, 37, on the last day of the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from my heart. And so I just think about the people that were watching this crucifixion remembered what Jesus said. The people were watching, right? <clears throat> it's just so awesome how, how God works. And how everything, he knows everything. <clears throat> it was God's good plan for this to happen. <clears throat> In Ephesians 1, verse, uh, I'm going to start at 5. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. By bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. And how amazing and beautiful it is. That God decided in advance to adopt us. Into his family. These weren't adoption papers. But it was through the precious blood of his son. That we've been adopted by him. He purchased us. He adopted us by the blood of Jesus. He is so, so we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave us. Our sins. And so, what are we doing with the freedom that Jesus purchased us with, with his blood? Like, what are we doing with that freedom? Are we continuing to go on, living to follow our own desires, doing what we want to do? I mean, think about it. And I don't know about you guys, but when I would watch a TV show and I would see like a murder take place or they'd have pictures and it was all bloody and gory, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to look at it. But when I think about the blood of Jesus, man, <coughs> that doesn't disgust me. That takes me to a true place of worship in the throne room. Oh my gosh, Jesus. Your blood. The blood of Jesus that cries out love. The blood of Jesus that cries out a hatred for sin. But then tells the sinner, come, and I'm going to wash you with my blood. 
and make you right in my sight by, by my blood? And as we think about it, every time that we sin, we're nailing Jesus back to the cross. We're saying your, your blood sacrifice, your perfect sacrifice, your, your perfect precious blood isn't good enough. And then there's a heart change because that's what has to happen. And then Jesus says, come here. Come here. I'm going to wash you with my blood. Do we value the blood of Jesus? I think it's so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. And all wisdom and understanding is through the blood of Jesus, us being clothed in the blood of Jesus, being made right in the sight of Jesus. And first Peter 118, it says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, it has been revealed for your sake. So, as we just think about the empty life that we were all living in, before we met Jesus, before we got to experience salvation, before we were clothed in the blood of Jesus, right, we had physical life, just physical blood. <clears throat> The empty life, pain, rejection, doubt, confusion, shame, failure, depression, drugs, addiction, fear, guilt, abuse, prostitution, relationships, the empty life, sitting in an abandoned house, empty, as as. We were empty. Sitting in a prison dorm room. Sitting behind the closed door in the bathroom. Where your, where your, your thoughts are suicide. Wanting to give up. But then Jesus met you right where you were at. He's purchased us with his blood. Saying, come to me. Come to me. Let me wash you. Let me make you clean. Let me wash you with my blood. Let me give you life. Let me fill your life. Relationships was a big one for me personally. Right? I was always the one that said, you man, you make me complete. It's empty. It's empty. Jesus Christ is the only one that can make you complete. In first John five, starting in six. It says, and Jesus Christ was revealed as God's son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. So we have three witnesses. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three agree. 
And in another translation, it says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Word being Jesus. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God. And God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have God's son does not have life because there's only life in the blood of Jesus. Being clothed in the blood of Jesus. You guys want to turn to Hebrews 10? I'm going to start reading in verses or verse 19. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting in him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting time together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment in the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. And now we have the three witnesses, the spirit, the blood, and the water. And all three agree. Just think, how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge and I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. And it is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. And I just want to, I want to stop there. Because let's remember, let, let, let's go back to that day before we came to really recover. You, 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 we're willing to do whatever, right? You made the phone call. Do you want to be well? Yeah, what's that look like? I had no idea what it looked like. I didn't even know who Jesus was. 
But let's, let's think back. Right before you made the phone call, you were willing to do whatever it, it, it took. You were desperate. You were desperate your whole life. Your heart's longing was for Jesus. We just we didn't know that. Our heart's cry was for Jesus. When we were on the prison rack, trying to come up with the next fix, I know for me it was, in the bathroom, having thoughts of suicide, struggling with family, battling addiction, those moments where you broke down and cried and you had no idea what you were crying for, but it was the Holy Spirit just groaning. <clears throat> you knew there was better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay, and my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved and so before we 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 pray i just want to take a moment to to remember what jesus christ did on the cross the blood of jesus like we're about to 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 eat true food and drink true true drink we're about to drink the blood of jesus that gives life We're about to, to eat his flesh. Let's just take a moment to remember what Jesus did. How God is like, man, here's my son. And he was just resolute determined to complete his father's will on the cross. He didn't give up. He didn't. He went to the cross. And even as he was being tempted to come down off that cross, he did. So let's, let's take a moment, remember what Jesus did on the cross. Truly value his blood. I go and Travis, do you guys want to pray for us and then we'll take communion as a family? Yeah, Lord Jesus, I, we thank you for the cross, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that now dwells in us, Lord Jesus, that rivers of living water can flow from flow from our hearts, Lord, that there everything was destitute. There's a dry wasteland. Now there is life. And it's because of the cross. Because of your sacrifice, Lord. And we're grateful and we're thankful, Jesus, for your blood.
thank you for this new covenant, Lord, that we can come to you. Put all of our faith in you, Lord Jesus, and that you'll make us different. That, that you'll really make us different, like that the law can never make us different. It couldn't transform us, but with the new covenant, Lord, because of your blood and receiving the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, we can actually be transformed. I'm grateful, Lord. So, Jesus, I pray that as your body, we continue to push into the pursuit of holiness, just pursuing you, Lord Jesus, to be like you came. That we would just be united as brothers and sisters. That a culture, that your culture would be built here, Lord, the way that you want it to be built. And that we would just work uh, side by side to build that culture, to build your help build your church, Lord. Just responding to the new life that we have here. We love you and it's in your name. Yeah, so Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for who you are, and I want to thank you for what you have done. Jesus, as I think about uh, what you left behind to step into this world to make a, a way for us to experience a new life-giving way, to enter into your presence and to commune with you and experience you, Lord Jesus, these things are too great for me to fully understand. Uh, but Lord, uh, it just brings me into a place of gratitude and thankfulness for being given and shown the grace. And Lord, it's even more of a blessing to be able to see that in the lives of the people that you have blessed me with and put me in the midst of. So Lord, I pray that as we take this communion, uh, I pray that uh, it's, it's a time that is just glorifying to you. I pray that you're pleased as we look down, Lord Jesus from heaven and you're just pleased with the, the results of the pain and suffering and sorrow that you experience and exposed yourself to and I pray that this time uh, gives you honor the honor that a victorious soldier deserves because you exposed yourself to death to allow us to experience freedom so Lord we love you and it's in Jesus Christ's name that I pray Amen Take the name of Right.